listening to the Dynamic Women podcast. Each week, you'll be inspired by our global community of women. They'll share with you tools and stories to help you be dynamic in every area of life. He's your host, award-winning coach, and the CEO and founder of Dynamic Women, Diane Ralston. Hello, everyone. This is Diane Rolston, and welcome to Dynamic Women. In this interview, I get to interview a personal friend, a, a guru in fitness and nutrition, Nicole Rizali. Hi, Nicole. Hi, I'm so happy to be here. Yes, I'm thrilled to have you here. Um, what we're going to talk about today, a little bit about you, a little bit about your journey, um, maybe a few little secrets and tips that you're going to share with us, as well as learning a little bit more about your business, personal training, and this whole, like all these myths around uh, plant-based nutrition, you're going to give us a little inside scoop on that. Um, and then for the members of our Dynamic Women community, you get to also in the Global Club, you get to see the full video of Nicole training on plant-based nutrition. She's going to bust the five myths and uh, that people have about plant-based nutrition as well as get us started very simply, easily, and in a way that is affordable. So make sure you jump over, jump on over to the Global Club to check that out. So Nicole, tell us a little bit more about your story. Yeah, definitely. So I got started in fitness when my son was just about two years old. I joined a women's kickboxing gym and absolutely fell in love um, and saw such a, an amazing transformation, not only externally i did lose a good amount of weight lost the remainder of my baby weight but just internally was the biggest change i realized that i had a voice and that i was mm. strong and confident and wow uh, yeah and after going through that transformation i knew that i needed to help other women feel the same way it was so important to me that especially new moms know that they can do it and they are doing it and that they're awesome and actually, I can say that I've, I've been on the receiving end of that from you because we met four weeks post baby number two, um, and you were basically my trainer for a year of me liking coming to the gym and not liking coming to the gym. Yep. <laughs> so at what point did you go from someone who showed up at the gym after your, your son was two uh, to someone who's now training others and doing nutritional work. So tell us about that journey. Yeah, so um, I decided that I wanted to work at this gym um, and applied for a job there, ended up getting it, was really excited. I worked there for about four years. Um, and then in the midst of that, I decided to look into personal training um, just to try and kind of expand my horizons gain more knowledge. I really wanted to learn about how people moved and injuries and, you know, how I could really help them get stronger physically. Uh, so I guess it was four or five years after I was started kickboxing, I decided to do my personal training certification. I went through two different um, certifications with that. Uh, and then after all of that, I realized how important nutrition was and decided that I wanted to add nutrition training. So I went and got my certification to become a nutrition coach. So, yeah. Hmm. So I'm going to hold off on the plant-based. I want to come, I want to spin back to life as a mom and as a personal trainer, because you're trying to accommodate or you probably have experienced in the beginning trying to accommodate the client schedule but you have your own schedule to manage with a little one and how old's your son now he's nine now nine. so drop off pick up like i'm sure a lot of our the listeners are busy moms who also are in charge of the kids so how do, how do you manage that? How do you balance that? How, do you, how does that not do your head in, basically? 
<laughs> yeah, definitely. So at first I really needed to get my now husband, who was my boyfriend at the time, on board and he was happy to see me do what I wanted to do. So we, I mean, my son was in full-time daycare because I worked full-time prior to that. So he was in daycare. At the beginning we had to hire a babysitter realized that we were spending way too much money on childcare. So um, my husband actually switched careers and got a new job, allowing me to do what I wanted to do. So for many years, I did um, hmm. you know, morning and evening shifts and burnt out, <laughs> realized that that was way too much. Um, so now what I've done is I've created my schedule that I work in the morning. So I work quite early. Um, my earliest client is 5 a.m., and I finish by 2 p.m. so that I can pick up my son after school and be home in the evenings. Okay, so for anyone out there that just went 5 a.m., really? Wow. Uh, I know there's a lot of people out there that are in the 5 a.m. club and, you know, good for you. And uh, I'm sure there's a lot of things that helped you get there. But what helped you, Nicole, to be able to get up consistently for that time, other than the pressure of a client waiting for you. But like, what, what are your tips for that if anyone's wanting to start getting up earlier? Yeah, definitely. So obviously having somebody waiting for me gets me out of bed. Um, but I realized shortly after starting these 5 a.m. sessions that if I woke up at 3.45 twice a week and then woke up at like five or six, three times a week, my schedule was just all over the place. I was exhausted. Mm. So. Now I just get up between 3.45 and 4.30 during the weekdays and I do it because it's quiet. So a lot of moms out there, it's never quiet, right? Kids are always there, spouses, whoever. Yeah. It's always loud, right? So um, I really enjoy meditating and so that's my time to drink my coffee, my time to meditate, my time to yeah. read or write, get any work done. It's just it's my time and it is so important to me now that I've created this habit that I couldn't imagine like the days that I don't wake up early I am flustered because I haven't had that time to just center myself mm -hmm. and prepare myself for the day. Hmm. Okay. So I, I already mentioned plant-based nutrition and I know this is big for you. I've seen your, inst your Instagram feed. Yeah, your Instagram as well as your Facebook feed. And I'll admit, I like me a steak, I like my meat, but boy, do your meals look gorgeous, colorful, like I just wanna reach in and, and take them. So let's pull it back to what got you into being plant-based? Um, kind of what was your journey like around that? Yeah, so growing up, I, never really enjoyed eating meat. Um, I kind of ate it because I had to, but I was the kid that like, if we were having a pork chop, I cut off all the fat around it. Cause it was just, it grossed me out. Um, and I wouldn't say it's any, like it was any really ethical reasons. It was just, I really didn't like the taste of it. I just ate it because it was protein and you have to eat protein and whatnot. I didn't really have a choice growing up. I think I tried to go vegetarian for a week and my mom would not help me with it because she's always been meat, potatoes, vegetables. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, it was very much like, okay, you do this and you do it on your own. So um, when I had my son and moved out, I kind of followed that, you know, how I had grown up eating. Um, and I tried doing like the whole 30, so eating lots of, it's basically the opposite of plant-based. Um, yeah. I found I got really ill off of it and I didn't feel good. And, I, and because I was always so interested in like a vegetarian or plant-based diet, I started researching it. I started following people who did it. Um, and I guess it was, gosh, five years ago now that I really like dove into it and wanted to learn more about it. And so I kind of slowly transitioned to vegetarian. I cut out like red meat and pork because I really, it, that they don't make me feel good. So I just stopped having that. Um, kept chicken in for a while and then finally said, okay, done with chicken. And then eggs and dairy were the last two that were a bit harder to kick. I never drank milk growing up. I had an intolerance to it. So dairy wasn't a big one. I know I shouldn't eat it because it doesn't make me feel good, but ice cream and cheese is good, right? So, um, yeah. and then 
last January, actually, I decided to try going fully vegan for, I think it was eight weeks. So just about two months. And I loved it. I felt amazing. Um, I lost, I don't know, I don't really weigh myself. So I don't know how much weight I lost, but I was in like <laughs> the best shape that I had been in for a very long wow. time. Yeah. And I just, I loved how I felt. Like you said, the, my pictures, like I love how the food looks. Um, I love how it tastes. I get excited when I eat. You should see me. My husband laughs at me because I'll be like sitting at the dinner table, <laughs> dancing around, <laughs> excited to eat my dinner. Um, wow. So it's, it's always been very intriguing to me and seeing the benefits from it really just made it all make sense. Wow. Yeah. Cool. So I know in uh, the Globe Club, you're sharing um, all about the plant-based diet. So I won't ask you too much here, but can you give us just, for those of, of those people who are like, no, meat is the way to go, and how else are you going to get your protein? Can you give us just two protein sources? I know you've got a, a graphic on your social media right now with many, but yeah. can you give us just two right now that maybe people weren't thinking of? Yeah, definitely. Um, well, my favorites, um, I love black beans. Black beans have a good, like a fantastic amount of protein. I think a common one would be like tofu and tempeh, um, but like beans, legumes. Oh, don't go into all of them. Yeah. <laughs> you work for it. Yeah. Get it. What's your social media handle? Uh, it's Nicole Brizali underscore. Can you spell your last name? So it's N-I-C-O-L-E-B-R-A-Z-Z-A-L-E underscore. Perfect. So um, scroll along there and see these Instagram Pinterest worthy images of food and check out the different protein sources um, because that, that I know that I've looked at it and been like, can I just take that meal from you? Because that looks awesome. Now, um, in building a business, so you were, as, if I can ask, you were a single mom for a while. Yeah. And then you had your boyfriend and then your boyfriend became your husband. Yeah. Congratulations. I know that's what, just within the last year you were married. Yep. Congratulations. So, um, and I say that just so those listeners who are in similar, you know, I've had similar life experiences can relate to you on that level. And, um, and others, I can't even imagine uh, being a single mom, like hats off to you. So I want to ask like, in the building of your business, what is one of the hard, and that I, you know, that doesn't have to be the hardship, um, but what is a hardship that you've had and how did you get past it? Ooh, good question. And it could be with a person, it could be a situation, it could be with a company, it could be uh, scheduling balance, whatever it is, anything in life that just was hard for you in the journey. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, the scheduling has always been the biggest one because I do want to be home for my family. Um, but at the same time, I'm very passionate about what I do and I love to work. Um, so checking in with myself and reminding myself what's important and why I'm doing this has been the biggest kind of lesson for me because mm -hmm. I could easily go to work for 80 hours a week and never be home. <laughs> but I don't want that life for myself or my family. I want to be around for my son and I want to show him that, you know, he can do whatever he wants to do. So yeah, I think scheduling definitely mm -hmm. and setting up the boundaries around the scheduling. Now that my son's older, I'm, I'm able to communicate with him and say, okay, like I need this amount of time. Just please don't bother me. I love you. You know where the food yourself. is. Yeah. Amuse yeah. yourself. So it's nice as he's getting older that I can kind of allow him to amuse himself. Yeah. So it sounds like not only in this, in, in you empowering yourself to set these boundaries and, and request the time you need, but you're also teaching your son to be independent in that. And your clients get to receive the empowerment that you give them. And I remember the days that I did not want to show up at the gym. But when I walked in that door and you're like, Diane, you're here. Yay. That motivation, you don't even know how much that meant to me. Um, and so that says a lot about your character. It definitely shows how much passion you have for the work you do. 
Um, and so you're currently doing personal training. Yes. Yeah. You're doing online training. Yes. Yes. And you do nutritional programs for um, mainly busy moms, probably. Yeah. Yes. yes. Definitely. Okay. Am I missing anything of the, the hats you wear that, and the offerings that you give? Um, no, that sounds about right. Okay. Yeah. And what would you say to, and we'll finish on this, what would you say to a woman who is wanting to start a business in personal training? You, you have two, I'm going to give you an A, B choice. What would you say to a woman who's wanting to start her own business in personal training? And or what would you say to someone who's wanting to um, like get into better shape for their life? You can speak to both or you can speak yeah. to one. I, I don't always give options. <laughs> um, well, I think, I know, I think the reason I waited so long to get my personal training certification was that I had convinced myself that I couldn't do it because I had my son. Um, and so the biggest thing with personal training is that it opens up so many doors, like just getting your certification is like, it's just that first step. Um, but there's so many different options in the fitness industry and it's never going away, which is awesome. Everybody always wants to better themselves, which I think is fantastic. So you can really create something that works for you. And I think it's just so important for our kids to see us as like these strong women who can do these things and, you know, can do whatever we set our minds to. So I think just remembering that you can make it work however you want to make it work. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of work but the reward is, is, is there and it's amazing. And then as for getting in shape, it's kind of the same thing. Like just do it, <laughs> go for a walk, like just move your body, eat more vegetables, um, stop hating on how you look and really find things that you like about yourself because that's really where it starts. Like, you can lose 20 pounds, but if you don't work on the, on the mindset, it's nothing's going to change. So, you know, it's a lot of believing in yourself, which is scary at first, but having gone through it and knowing that it's possible, it's possible for anybody. So really just getting started in both, like if you're starting as a personal trainer or you're starting to get fit, like just do it. Just do it. Thank you. <laughs> just do it. Well, it's fitting as a personal trainer. Yeah. Thank you for sharing more about you, your life, your journey, um, your business. And I know with how you make your clients feel in the gym, um, I can only imagine how you would hold their hand in their nutrition as well and really fully uh, empower them to make the right choices for them. So thank you for being with us today. Um, and we're going to switch gears and jump into our expert training. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks Nicole. Thank you, Dynamic Women, for joining us today. Please hop on over to iTunes to subscribe and leave us a review. Who do you know who needs to hear our message? We'd love it if you'd share our channel with your friends and family. If you're ready to be more dynamic, have more balance and more success, head over to www.dynamicwomenclub.com forward slash free gift for your key to success book. Stay dynamic.